um, the correct, um, how to, to choose the correct, um, the, the right uh, institution for, for you. So please, please feel uh, uh, welcome to, um, to ask your questions. You can write them down in the chat box and then we'll answer them at the end. Or you can also open your mics, raise your hand and open your mics to ask your question. These are important sessions. Um, I think these, the, these moments where we are reviewing and checking universities, these are the key uh, moments for our university selection process. And all of the rest of the process has its base in, in this process of looking for the right institution. So uh, let me share my screen. And then, thank you so much today. Also, I have we have joining and actually the responsibles for this session is our webinars team uh, led by uh, Ana. We also have Jorge and we have um, uh, Fernanda, but we also have Yandi joining us and Mabel and, and me. So a great team today uh, joining us. And um, yeah, so. All right, so this is what we're going to be doing today. We're going to be doing uh, going over the process, uh, uh, the program selection. How do I choose the right university, and what things should I consider for uh, for that? And like I said today, uh, joining us we have uh, Bobby Rannigan from Embry Riddle Aeronautical University, and like I said, he was going to be sharing about his university. But today, Bobby, thank you so much for being here with us and taking the time to. Uh, support our our grantees uh, in this um, this big challenge that we have together uh, for them. So thank you so much for being here with us. And please, the floor is all yours. Okay, awesome. Um, so welcome everybody. Thank you so much for that warm welcome as well, Juan Ma. Um, yeah, like uh, Juan Ma said, I'm Bobby Brannigan. I'm the Associate Director for International Admissions at Embry-Riddle Aeronautical University. I'm here in sunny Daytona Beach, Florida. Um, so not too far away from you guys, uh, but we also do have a really cool campus in Prescott, Arizona uh, that might be a little bit closer to you. So I'm um, jumping right into it. Um, if you want to switch to the next slide. All right. So this is kind of um, the beginning of it. So um, basically, we're going to talk about applying to U.S. universities um, and the right fit. So I'm going to go over a lot of different information on how you can choose a university and choose where you want to be in the United States. So the next screen should be my contact information. If you guys have any questions, please um, you know, take a screenshot, write it down. Um, obviously, you know, we're definitely going to do Q&A today as well, um, but I do look forward to hearing your questions. Um, no question is a bad question. Uh, we love to answer questions, so that is definitely what we are here for as advisors to you. So um, we'll get started. All right, so it's all about the right fit. So as you can see, there's a lot of bubbles on the screen. Um, so there's a lot of things that you need to be thinking about as well. So thinking about academics, what interests you? Um, what do you want to pursue? What do you want to study? You're going to spend, you know, two years in an associate degree or four years in a bachelor degree. Um, you're going to want to like uh, what you're studying, right? Um, in terms of location, I'll go into that as well. Um, you know, where you want to be uh, specifically in the U.S., not only um, geographically, but um, it could be, you know, different types of cities, those types of things. Um, the value. So what kind of value are you getting out of your institution? So, of course, you're going to be paying a lot of money and hopefully you get a lot of scholarship um, as well, but also the value of the education, um, the value of the resources that the school is going to be able to provide to you. Um, campus life. You don't just want to go to a school and be bored all the time, right? That's no fun. So you definitely want to be um, involved when you're on campus. Um, go and, you know, check out the chess team, go and check out the skydiving club, um, go and check out the intramural sports. So there's definitely a lot of different things that you're able to do um, at institutions in the United States. In terms of the culture, um, do you wanna learn about other cultures? Do you wanna find others that are um, from your culture and your background? Um, you know, you're definitely going to be able to see a very diverse population in the United States, no matter where you go. Um, but some institutions will offer a little bit more diversification um, than others. Selectivity, so how selective is the school? Um, so how many seats they have for their programs? Um, this kind of goes uh, with rankings. However, um, you know, there could be different uh, criteria for that. And I'll definitely explain that um, during that slide. And then support. So not only academic support, but emotional support. You're in a foreign country, you know, you're um, studying, this is your first time in college, you might not know a whole lot of people. 
Um, so, you know, what kind of support services do they have in terms of tutoring, in terms of um, emotional support, physical support? You know, do they have um, gymnasiums for you? Do they have, um, you know, what, what type of resources do they have on the campuses um, that will help you through your time? So next slide. All right, so starting out with choosing your program. So right now, you know, you're kind of thinking about a lot of different things. Maybe your parents, um, you know, have studied something or maybe, you know, what they're doing for work or your grandparents, your aunts or uncles, your friends, um, you know, maybe they've kind of given you a little bit of an idea of where you want to go. Obviously, you've seen TV. Um, so, you know, there could be a specific program that you're interested in. So specifically for the programs, um, you usually have a major. So that's your primary field of study. So you could major in engineering. Um, a minor could be a specialization. So it could be computer engineering, electrical engineering, mechanical engineering, aerospace engineering. Um, it, and then it also could have specializations with those as well. Area of concentration would be, say that you want to pursue aerospace engineering um, with an area of concentration in propulsion. So you want to specifically do rockets or you could do astronautics or aeronautics. It just kind of depends on what the program is able to offer you. Same thing with medicine, with business, um, all these different majors and minors and areas of specialization um, definitely have, you know, something that you can kind of hone into. Um, that way you can really be specialized in there. And then double major. So you could double major if you wanted to. So you could do, say, engineering with business um, or, you know, again, you could just minor in business. That means there's only a couple of classes that you would take specifically to business. Um, and then everything else would be whatever your primary study or your major would be. You're not required to double major. You're not required to um, declare a minor either. Um, some programs don't have areas of concentration. So it just kind of depends. Um, but I just wanted to give you a little bit more information about uh, examples that you could do. Um, also, did you know that many students will actually switch their major at least one time during study? I myself did it. I switched twice. Um, but there's plenty of students that definitely will switch. So typically your first year to two years is going to be general education requirements. So maybe you're going into college and you're like, yeah, I'm going to study business. And then you start going through and then you start learning a little bit more. And you're like, actually, I really like astronomy and astrophysics. So then you're able to switch over to a degree program um, later, um, but not too late. So you can still stay on the right path and the right track to be able to graduate on time. Um, next slide, please. All right, and then thinking about your major, um, what interests you? So determine your interests, like do you have a hobby? Um, who influences you? Do you have a hero? You know, what do they do? What is your dream job? Um, where's your passion? What makes you happy? So your interest helps you choose your field of study. If you're not interested in engineering, don't go into an engineering program. Um, you're only gonna get really, really bugged out and you're not gonna have a lot of fun in there too. So again, you're putting all this time, all this effort into, you know, this, particular degree program, um, you definitely want it to be interesting to you. Um, that way that it doesn't feel like work, um, it feels rewarding. So next slide. All right, and then in terms of majors and professions. So um, picking a major is not the same as choosing a job. So just because you're um, studying business does not mean that you're gonna be specifically in business, right? So a major in engineering, nursing, accounting, or something else is teaching you a specific trade. Um, so that means that you have a major in engineering, but you could go into, um, obviously it's going to be an engineering field, but um, it just kind of depends on the specific realm of it. So you could do something um, more into design than actually making. Um, so it just kind of depends what you're able to do in your degree program. Uh, most majors prepare you for many different career paths. Um, this is an example. A degree in business might lead to accounting or finance, managing, um, marketing, business analytics, and more. So um, just because you're thinking, you know, I'll be management. No, there's actually many different things that you can do with a business degree um, than just being a manager somewhere. All right, next slide. All right, and then going into choosing a location. So geographical locations vary in the U.S. Um, if you've never been to the U.S., we are very, very diverse in terms of our geography. So we have mountains, we have beaches, we have um, almost anything. We have plains um, in terms of like flat earth, I guess you could say. Um, so a lot of farmland, you know, in the heartland. Um, so it just depends what environment do you like. So specific to geography, do you like snow? Do you like the beaches? Do you like the mountains? Would you rather be near lakes, um, near forests, those types of things? So there's definitely somewhere for you to go um, in the United States. Do you like big cities, rural countryside, um, small towns? So you can think about 
um, you know, looking for an institution, maybe in a smaller town. Daytona Beach isn't that large, um, you know, and it's still a great institution. Um, but you know what, somewhere in Chicago, um, you know, is a great institution as well and a gigantic metropolis. So it just kind of depends, again, on what you um, particularly want to do and where you want to be in the United States. So if you hate snow, probably don't go towards the north. <laughs> um, just look for something, you know, in a better um, climate. Uh, that way you're going to, again, enjoy yourself because you're definitely going to be there for four years. Um, and, you know, I moved away from the north. It was too cold for me. That's why I'm here in Florida. Um, but some people love it. So it's completely up to you. Uh, many options are available in the U.S. We have over 4,000 institutions in the U.S., uh, which is a lot. So you definitely are able to find something um, that will, you know, be a fit for you. All right. Next slide. All right. And then these are the different types of universities and institutions in the U.S. So um, as you're looking through this list, just kind of think about, um, you know, where you potentially want to go. So if you don't know the difference between them, I'm just going to give you a quick rundown. So a public university um, is usually the university of um, in whatever state they're in or, you know, Florida State University, University of Florida. Those are actually two different universities. They um, get federal funding. Um, typically, they're able to provide a little bit more in terms of scholarships because um, it does come from the um, federal government. Um, so they do still have sponsors. Um, the degree programs might be the exact same between a public and a private university. So my university is a private university. So we have private donor funding. Um, we do get some federal funding, but not as much as the public institutions. Um, Two-year um, universities or colleges, you might hear them being called. Um, those are typically the associate degree level. Uh, so right out of high school, you can go to a two-year um, community college, they might be called as well. Um, and then you can transfer to um, a four-year public or a four-year private institution. The four-year um, typically are going to have bachelor degrees. Those are the four-year degree programs. And then um, most of them will go on to have um, additional like master's programs, uh, doctoral or PhD programs. Some of them could actually have associate degrees as well. So just because they're a four-year institution doesn't mean um, that you couldn't still do, say, an associate degree there um, and only spend two years there. Uh, research institutions are very heavy on research. Um, usually they're in the medical fields. Um, they could be in um, you know, some sort of a science field as well. Uh, career technical is going to be a very, usually short term. Um, you could learn uh, nursing, you could learn an engine, you could be um, a mechanic, you could definitely do something in dentistry as well. So any of those short vocational courses um, is kind of what the career technical ones would be. Um, art conservatory is going to be, if you're really into art, um, typically they require um, to have some sort of a portfolio. Um, and it doesn't just have to be painting, it could be photography, it could be sculpture, it could be, you know, many different things. Um, but if you're really into art, there are some really great specific art conservatory, but that's all that you're going to learn there is going to be in the arts. Uh, liberal arts is going to be not art, um, could be art history, but liberal arts um, is more the different types of programs like political science, um, could be some business programs, but they're going to be a little bit more um, expanded in terms of where you're able to go in the industry. They're still great programs. They're just not um, specific to one job. So like um, if there's a, again, aerospace engineering program, maybe at um, a different institution, there might just be a specific like engineering program, which blankets a lot of the aspects of engineering. And then an Institute of Technology um, is going to really focus on those STEM um, fields. So science, technology, engineering, and math. So there could be a specific um, Institute of Technology that focuses on one of those aspects. So there's a lot of different types of um, institutions in the US. Most, um, you know, will go for the public, private, um, could start out at a community college, which I'll go over as well, um, or a four year too. So, all right, next slide. All right, so in terms of community colleges, these are the two year um, colleges. So nearly 50% of American students um, actually go to a community college first. Um, and then they're able to transfer to a four-year um, institution or university. Um, so what this means is, you know, many times they don't require the SAT or ACT. Um, so right out of high school, you can jump right into a community college. Um, there's a couple of different places that you can go um, when you're at a community college. So you could complete your first two years of undergraduate studies, um, following the arrow going up, earn associate's degree or certificate, and then you could transfer. 
um, to a university, to a four-year university to finish out your bachelor degree. Uh, what you also could do is transfer without an associate degree uh, directly into a four-year university. But say that you do your associate degree um, and you don't transfer, then you can take a gap year, maybe look for a job. You are eligible um, on your student visa to um, go through what's called OPT. So you could work for an organization or a company in the United States for 12 months after you graduate. And then you can transfer um, to a four-year degree um, or four-year institution to finish out your degree program. And then um, you can go on to uh, more OPT or you know, move on to your master's degree as well. So it just kind of depends on what your journey would be, what you would want to do. Um, but there are, again, a lot of options for you. Um, but yeah, community college is a really good um, route to go as well. Um, 96,000 international students were in community colleges um, as of 2019. Um, because or for with the open doors report. So, all right, next slide. All right, walking into rankings. So do they matter? I'm sure you've heard about rankings. Um, you've heard about the Ivy League schools, Yale, Harvard, Berkeley. Um, so do rankings actually matter? So the factors that go into rankings um, are research output, employability, academic uh, reputation, their programs, those types of things. Factors that are not measured, though, um, is what you will learn beyond the grades. So, of course, you're going to be going to school um, to learn, right? But you're also going to be learning a lot of other things as well. So um, campus life, it's going to be um, all different types of, again, resources that you're able to have, what friendships you're going to make. Um, you know, what your campus experience is going to be. Um, campus diversity, are you gonna love this uh, city? Um, emotional support, all these things are not ranked um, because rankings are literally only numbers. Um, so high ranked institutions are not always the best fit for you. So just because you are applying to a highly ranked institution, um, it may not be the best fit for you. So it may look good on paper, you may get there, you may hate it and then have to transfer out. All right, next slide. All right, and so in terms of selectivity, um, what makes the university selective? So it could be the reputation, the available seats or financial aid and scholarship opportunities. So selectivity does not determine quality of the institution. Um, some institutions need to be selective because they only have a certain amount of scholarship dollars that they're able to give out. Um, maybe they're selective because they only have a certain amount of available seats in their program as well. Um, their reputation, it might be different than um, a smaller school or a larger school. So the institution being selective with the students, um, you know, or you being selective with your institutions that you're choosing to apply to, um, you need to be thinking about these things as well. What is that university's reputation? Um, how many seats do they have available? Do you want somewhere that you're gonna have 400, 500 kids in your class um, in a lecture hall, or do you want something that's maybe 20, 30 kids in each class are going to get that practical knowledge and you're going to be able to um, learn at a better pace um, and make those relationships and be able to network with your profession. So it just kind of depends, again, um, you know, the selectivity um, of the institution that you're looking at. All right, next slide. In terms of the different types of admission review, there's holistic review, academic comprehensive review, and then guaranteed admissions. So really quick with this, holistic review is we're gonna be looking at everything. So we're gonna be looking at your grades, um, test scores, we're gonna be looking at letters of recommendation, essays, um, those types of things. If you did extracurricular activities, were you part of sports, uh, were you in clubs, uh, leadership skills, those types of things. Academic comprehensive review is going to only be looking pretty much at your grades. Um, they're go gonna be looking at your subjects that you did well in and then the subjects that maybe you didn't do so well in. Um, they're gonna be looking at test scores if they are required as well. Uh, maybe supplementally, you can submit um, letters of recommendation and personal essays or personal statements, but um, with that academic comprehensive review, they're really only gonna be looking at your grades. In terms of guaranteed admissions, um, that's just what it is, is guaranteed. So you meet their minimum requirements for either a GPA, a grade point average, or you meet their um, test scores, whatever that may be, um, you are guaranteed admission um, as long as you meet those criteria, which there's many institutions um, that do guaranteed admissions as well. So, all right, next slide. All right, so campus resources, uh, when you're looking at institutions as well, so like I was talking about, uh, make sure that it, they're good resources for you. So health and wellness center. Um, if you like to work out and they don't have a health and wellness center, you probably shouldn't be going there. They don't um, make sure that you know their uh, students are taken care of, right? So the labs, um, are you going to actually be able to learn in these labs? Do they have the labs for what you're going to school for? 
So if you're going to school and majoring in biology, what kind of bio biology labs do they have? What other different types of labs as well? Um, the library. So um, many libraries are going fully digital now, but they still have a quiet place for students. They have study rooms. Um, they're able to lend out maybe computers, um, still books, and you know those types of things. Um, usually they have tutoring centers in there as well. So you know, look at their library resources. Uh, food selection. If you like a specific type of food, hopefully they have it. If not, make sure that it's close by. Um, fitness center. Again, it's kind of like health and wellness center. Um, so, and then faith and spirituality center, if you're very religious, um, you know, if that is something that's very, very important to you, you want to make sure that you have those resources available to you. Um, and typically, uh, institutions will have that available to you. All right, next slide. All right, and the student organization. So, like I said, get involved. You want to love the time that you're having. You're spending four years in an institution and you definitely want to have fun. You're going to learn a lot. And uh, you're going to learn a lot and then you're going to meet a lot of cool people as well. So different types of organizations um, could include campus service, uh, cultural, Greek life, honorary, military. So all different types of things. Um, at many institutions, they have over 100 different clubs and organizations. So you can pretty much find anything that you're interested in. Um, students who get involved on campus actually have higher rates of retention and graduation, as well as higher GPAs. So you're having a fun time in um, class in campus, um, you're part of a group, maybe you're part of a really cool study group, um, you know, that's also part of some organization on campus. So uh, really getting involved, getting those leadership skills, um, you know, proves to employers, especially uh, when you're networking and going to career fairs, um, that's a good resume builder uh, to make sure that you have something that you can fall back on um, and you still get some experience as well. A lot of organizations are able to go um, on competitions, they're able to go on retreats, um, so, you know, go on trips. So there's many, many different things that you can do um, in student organizations on campus. All right, next slide. All right, in terms of student housing, um, resident aid positions allow for free housing. That's actually the first thing that I wanted to say on this slide because um, many students don't know about this. So you could actually live in a dormitory or in resident housing on campus. Um, and you would be, you could be eligible um, to be a resident aide. That means you, you kind of have to deal with everybody that's on your floor, um, but you also get free housing. So, which is really cool. Um, different types of housing is guaranteed housing or optional housing. So guaranteed, obviously, um, if you're required to live on campus, um, then they are going to guarantee you housing. Also, maybe you're not required, but you still want to. Some institutions are able to guarantee housing to anybody that wants to live on campus. Optional is just that. Whether you want to live on campus or not, it's completely up to you. Um, they would probably have space available for you if you wanted. Um, roommate choice, resident hall choice, and type of room choice. So usually this is a questionnaire type thing um, that you'll fill out. So you'll fill out um, the specific other type of person that you want to live with, because typically you'll have one to three roommates um, during your time in resident housing. Um, resident hall choice. It could be a specific one for first years. It could be a specific one for people that are in sports. Um, specific one for people that are in honors, like all the different types of clubs on campus, um, type of room choice as well. So maybe you could choose having one roommate or three. It just kind of depends um, of what they have available. There are inclusive communities um, as well. Sorry, um, amenities, key card access, 24-7 security. So many times um, student housing is going to be uh, pretty secure for you. Um, nobody can just walk up off the street and go into your resident housing. So you can feel secure that way too. All right, there you go. Sorry. Thank you. Um, all right, so when you're applying to universities, um, apply broadly. I know Education USA is gonna do a great job of helping you out with this. Um, and I do know that Juanma is gonna be talking about it as well. Um, but I just wanna to touch on a couple of things here. So if you're applying to a REACH school, so that means maybe one of those Ivy League schools, maybe one of those schools is very, very highly ranked. Um, also apply to other schools that do meet your competitive academic profile. And why is this? Because financial aid and scholarship competitiveness could be completely different. Maybe you know there's a school that's able to offer you a lot more money um, based on your academic background and maybe your extracurricular background uh, versus that higher ranked university that might only be able to offer you a little bit and it might be a lot more expensive too. Um, so unpredictable, unpredictable holistic review. Uh, maybe they're gonna be requesting a lot of different things that you didn't even think um, to add there into your application. Um, you know, maybe you think that, you know, you're admitted to this university, but then maybe you are um, put on a wait list for this other university. So it just kind of, um, you know, makes you think, um, making sure that you have a backup plan as well. 
Um, having to rely on wait lists are not fun either. So you're going to be sitting there for months on end, just waiting and waiting and waiting um, just to come to find out that maybe, you know, you missed the deadline for one university and then um, you were denied admission to the other university, maybe because they filled up already or they weren't able to provide you with the financial aid package that you needed or, you know, something else along those lines. Uh, limit your number of applications as well. But again, Juan Ma is going to be talking to you about that. All right, next slide. All right, actually that was all my information. Um, so I will talk to you very, very briefly um, about, uh -oh. <laughs> um, about my institution. So um, a lot's going on, um, really quick. Um, we were established um, in 1926. We are the world's oldest, largest fully accredited institution. We do focus on aerospace and aviation. Um, as you can see, we were named the Harvard of the Skies by Time Magazine. Um, our campuses are located in Florida and Arizona, as well as um, a small campus in Singapore. We do have a worldwide online campus um, that have um, bachelor degrees, master's degrees, and PhDs as well. Um, our institution, like I said, focuses on STEM programs. We're known for our engineering programs. Um, and we offer aeronautical science, uh, which is our professional pilot program. So if you're interested in becoming a pilot, uh, we do um, both rotary and fixed. So if you wanted to be an airplane pilot, we'll teach you that. If you wanted to be a helicopter pilot, we also teach that as well. That is only available at Prescott, Arizona. Um, to be an airplane pilot, you can do um, either Prescott or Daytona Beach. Uh, we have over 100 instructional aircraft as well that we utilize. Um, in those programs. Uh, we have many programs um, housed in the first of its kind College of Securities and Intelligence, um, and we have business programs as well. So in total, we have about 80 degree programs. Uh, we are a private institution as well, um, but we go from the associate level all the way up to the bachelor, master's, and PhD or doctoral level as well. Um, the student faculty ratio is about 24 to one. So that means class sizes are pretty small, uh, about 25 people in the class. So that gives you, um, the ability to engage with your professor and actually get that time um, with them and then you know with your subject matter as well. Um, on our campus, we have over 100 labs and facilities, uh, which includes such things as an ethical hacking lab, aircraft simulators, space flight operations, aquaponics um, lab, and even games and simulation. Um, and then we do have over 300 different clubs and organizations on our campus as well. Um, we're very diverse. We have over 148 different countries represented on our campuses. Uh, we offer partial merit-based scholarships based on the SAT or ACT um, and your high school GPA. Um, if you're not able to take the SAT or ACT, you know, we're working with students one-on-one -on -one to still uh, make sure that they're eligible for some sort of a scholarship. Um, we do athletic scholarships. So if you're, um, you know, you play any sports, we do offer athletic scholarships as well. Um, we don't require the SAT for admission. So if you're not interested in scholarships, then you don't necessarily need to submit the SAT either. So um, yeah, that's a little bit about Embry-Riddle. Again, uh, we'll do the Q&A probably at the end. If you have any specific que questions, please reach out to me. Um, but yeah, I'm going to pass it over to Juan Ma. Thank you. Thank you so much, Bobby. I, I, I wrote down some questions that I would I really like you to answer to us, but maybe we'll do that those at the end. Because um, I do want to um, ask you some questions about uh, Amber Riddle, specifically about the things that we explained today so students can have a little more um, a detailed idea. But yeah, so before we, we, we do that, my, my section is not going to be um, uh, too long. Um, well, based on, on this great information that uh, Bobby gave us, now I think I want to go a little bit deeper or more detail into in our program in the, for, for opportunity funds, what does that look like? What, um, uh, yes, we need to look for institutions and, 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 and look to what are our priorities um, and, and be able to see um, the big picture. But at the end, I do want to remind you uh, what are our guidelines? So, and, <clears throat> uh, and I'm really glad that um, Bobby mentioned something about this uh, in the presentation, but remember that we are looking uh, the, the process that we're going to be walking through is that we want to create a well-balanced university list. And uh, like what we said, we do not want to have all REACH schools, which REACH is going to be a term that we're, we're, you're going to be hearing a lot for universities that are, um, that are um, traditionally are known to be difficult to get in, that their percentage of acceptance is really low 
uh, that they require high um, GPAs or they um, their SATs or ACT scores of the average student is also uh, going to be higher than, than the average. Then you're gonna have your target schools uh, that are gonna be in the range of the middle. And then you want to have safety schools. Um, <clears throat> so that is what we're meaning by a balanced university list, right? A list that is not putting all of the efforts on just reach universities, but that, that you're stretching yourself and that you are uh, applying to uh, a little bit uh, more competitive schools, but you're also looking at other types of school. All of them that we are going to have um, uh, the programs and the 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 priorities of your interest, um, the the things that you're looking for, and we believe that there's no such thing as the one only one perfect university for you. We do believe that there's many different places in the U.S. where you're going to flourish. You're going to be happy. You're going to be uh, a successful student. So, like we said in Spanish, no te cases con una sola idea, right? Just uh, don't be just in just with one idea of one school. And I know that you are very competitive. And one of the reasons that you are in this program is because we have seen a lot of um, uh, great qualities in you that make you a very competitive student. And also with that comes better competitive thinking. And I know that you are very competitive. Uh, I've, I've had conversations with all of you already one-on-one -on -one, and I know knowing from your stories and where you're coming from that you're also aiming high and then we love that right but at the same time we want you to be a um, to make a, a a honest evaluation right together we're going to do an honest about honest evaluation of your qualifications and your profile to see what kind of schools are going to be your reach schools your target schools and your safety schools. Our program is going to cover five applications, right? Remember that, so it's going to be five universities that we are going to pay for with all of the expenses regarding the application process. But actually the average um, for in our program is that you guys apply to somewhere more than five, many uh, in, in previous years, students have applied to uh, seven, eight universities, I think two years ago, we had one student who applied to 10 universities uh, because at a certain point, um, five or 10, uh, it, just, it just opens up more your, 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 um, your possibilities to be accepted. And that this, maybe it's, it's not different at the end sometimes because you've already done most of the work. Yes, you're gonna write more essays. Yes, you're gonna be doing uh, more, a little bit more things, but the, the hardest part you've already done. And with that, I'm gonna say that we pay for five application uh, fees, but if you get fee waivers, uh, then you can apply for the, the, the programs that you're interested in, as long as they have been approved and they are in the, in the, um, in the university list that we've been working uh, with. So yes, five is what we're aiming for, but many times students get um, fee waivers and they, you end up applying to more universities than, than the five. So be on the lookout for those fee waivers. Uh, we're, uh, in, and later in the month of uh, July, we're going to be having uh, a speed meeting uh, with some universities uh, that might be able to provide you with uh, fee waivers. Ask, ask for those, right? In the Common App, there's a certain point where you're going to be uh, uh, requesting also fee waivers. So, but yeah, so like I said, we pay for five, uh, but at the end, many times you will end up applying to more universities than just the five. And as Bobby was saying also, we, we work on this idea of the best fit, the best fit institution. And this, this is the idea that there's no such thing as the perfect university for everybody, right? There is, a number of perfect universities for you, but that doesn't mean that the same universities that are great for Madeleine are going to be the best ones for Eliseo, right? Because you guys are different people, have different interests, different priorities. Uh, so you're not gonna have the same universities in your list because uh, you're different people. So with that is you need to look for, for that, the best fit. And we'll talk about a little bit more on that. But 
the main thing, I think one of our priorities in our program is that we know it's challenging and, and we'll talk about this in the one one sessions, uh, but you're looking for the most scholarship that you can get. Right? That's a that's our that's our challenge, right? And 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 we understand the challenges and we know, but that's what we're aiming for, right? And and that's what we want, that's what we want to prepare prepare really, really, really competitive um uh application packages, right? Get um high scores like I, I really like what Bobby said that if you're if you're looking for admissions, it's not you don't need to do the SAT. But if you are looking for scholarships, then yes, you do need to have the SAT. And the highest your score, the better it's going to be for you. So those are things that you should know, and we should be always getting, um, uh, remembering those things. And for our program, we're looking at the deadline for November 1st. Remember, that is our deadline. Maybe your universities are going to have deadlines for December 1st or January 1st, right, or other ones. But we, in, in our program, we want to have all of our things ready by November 1st, especially if you there's maybe down the road, you're gonna uh, see that there's um, um, early action or early decision and you need to submit everything by November 1st. So we're with that in mind, we are also looking at this uh, date. So <clears throat> those are some general guidelines. I just wanted to remind remind you uh, what is the, um, what we're in to. Um, so this idea of, of the best fit, you do want to understand that it's not only uh, that the, the, you are the best fit for university, but the university is also the best fit for you. And you want to see uh, this in terms of, for example, academic rigor, right? So how, um, how intensive are um, things going to be while I'm in, enrolled in this university? Do we share values? Are, are there certain things in my academic or just in, in my life history that really shows that the values that I share are according to what the university stands for, right? Many times has to do with, um, uh, maybe it has to do with religious values, right? Uh, maybe it has to do with um, things that I consider important in, in, in my life because of things that I've gone through. So those things are going to be very helpful in, when you're look, looking at the specific universities. For example, there's, there's, there's certain um, institutions, I've seen some uh, essay questions, for example, uh, that say, well, the, the, um, the falcon, let's say, I don't remember uh, the mascot, but the falcon is the mascot for our um, university. Uh, and it's because it resembles the principles of persistence and brave bravery, right? And show tell us how do you, as an applicant for our university, show these principles and values in your own life? Right? So these are ways that the universities are trying to see if uh, you share also the things that they consider to be important. Like uh, Bobby was saying, campus life. What different things of activities are there to do on campus. Maybe I'm a person that really does outdoors things or um, I'm really, really uh, looking to get uh, internship opportunities or one-on-one um, or -on -one, uh, with my instructors. And if I enroll at the university that most of my classes are going to be taught in big lecture halls or by, by teaching assistants, maybe I'm not going to have that um, or or maybe in the, in the institution that I want to go, I really need want to have research opportunities, and maybe some universities are not going to be focused on providing research opportunities for their undergrads. So all these different things that you need to look into: if the, is this university providing what I need, and am I the the uh, the kind of student that they are looking for? So how can you do this? Well, you can ask. Um, uh, in research, what does a typical student from that institution look like? Um, and for that, I do want to go back to Bobby, and I'm sorry that I didn't uh, tell you this, Bobby, before, but um, maybe do you have, regarding this this question, what the best fit and um, your institution, what would you say is the typical student? What qualities does a typical student have that the student that applies and also that gets accepted? uh into your institution um 
regarding I don't know the qualities just as as a, as a as a as a student as a human being what interests they have uh, or even like SATs or ACT scores things like that what does a typical student look like Sure yeah um, so a typical student will have about a 3.0 GPA or like a B average um, in their high school so if they're looking to go into one of our more technical programs so say um, engineering um, astronomy, astrophysics, those types of things. Uh, we're going to be really looking at the science and math um, grades and making sure that hopefully um, there's at least a B or an A in those classes um, and that they've been able to take potentially honors classes, uh, higher level classes, advanced classes, uh, whatever they may be called in your curriculum. Um, and, you know, making sure that you're able to excel in those classes as well. Um, other typical students will have SAT or ACT uh, test scores. So T is around a 1200 or above. Um, ACT is going to be around a 25 or above. Um, and then obviously, you know, they would be um, considered for the merit based scholarship um, based on that and their GPA together. Um, in terms of other specifics that we're looking for, um, maybe if you know some of our students have struggled um, in the past, maybe one year uh, they didn't do so well. So maybe in their tenth grade year uh, something happened, right? So then we would request um, a personal statement and recommendation letters as well. Um, we're not a typical university um, that requires those things. We do um, just recommend them. Um, so many of our students do not submit um, recommendation letters or personal essays unless we require them. Okay. And in terms of um, extracurricular activities, for example, since the, the focus of your university uh, is more specific, do you, uh, does a typical student already has been doing certain things related to engineering, participating in clubs or anything? Or, or uh, for example, would a student that doesn't have that background would have a chance of getting admitted? Yeah, so in our university, they definitely would. Um, many other universities have the same thing. So um, if they don't require, so we do more of a guaranteed admissions. Um, if you guys remember from when, you know, I was explaining the different types of admission, um, we don't necessarily do a holistic admission like some other institutions do. Um, so yeah, if you don't have a whole lot of extracurriculars, if you don't have, you know, a background in engineering, um, but it's something that really interests you and we see that through the classes that you've taken um, in high school and Maybe, you know, you've been part of a club or, um, you know, in, so we do an application, not the common app, it's just directly through our website, but there is a spot in there where you can list your aspirations and goals. And so if that's something that you're talking about, you're really interested in space, you're really interested in, um, you know, rocketry and um, those types of things, then we'll definitely take that into account as well when we're looking at the students. But um, we, we have a good mix of students that are really, really involved, that have gone to competitions, that are part of student government, that, you know, do all these different types of things. And then we have some students that really haven't um, been able to do a whole lot, maybe. Um, and we don't necessarily hold that against them either. So we uh, really are looking at the academics, um, you know, and then everything else is just a little bit supplemental. Um, but it does make you obviously a well-rounded student and a well-rounded person, it gets you more prepared for college life um, if you are more involved uh, when you're in high school, um, volunteer work, working at, you know, maybe your parents' business or, you know, whatever it may be, um, you know, that definitely looks good um, to the professors for sure. Admissions, I mean, as long as you, you know, meet our requirements, then yeah. Yeah, that, that's great. Thank you. That's exactly what I was looking for, right. uh, for the answer. And then, uh, so you can see, that those are the things that, and, and maybe you're not going to have an opportunity to be asking these questions directly. Maybe, maybe you will, but to all the universities that you're interested in, but uh, having that in mind, like what do I fit into the, what kind of uh, student uh, is interested in certain uh, universities, but also like Bobby said is, is not also having in mind that not every student looks the same, that goes to, to, to a university because universities are not looking to have uh, 500 students of the same, of exactly the same, right? That is not also what, what happens. They do want to have a, a, a variety and a diversity of the class that they, they accept. And that is why when, for example, let's say that you are a, an outstanding student that plays the violin, right? Uh, and say, okay, that's maybe something that uh, universities are uh, interested in, but just think that there's might be another 100 students 
like you, they play the violin with your same credentials, with the same um, GPAs and all that, applying to the same university. So universities are going to say, we don't need 100 uh, violin players this year. Right? We need variety. We want to have. So sometimes that can work in your favor. If there's something, your uniqueness makes you better, right? And, 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 and things like this. Um, another thing that you can do is like, like we were saying, make an honest assessment of your profile. And this is where making a, a, um, a uh, SAT <clears throat> um, practice test is going to help you to get an idea of where you're at, um, working really hard with your test prep, with the, with the materials that we're doing, but also looking at your GPA, looking at your activities, looking at your, write, your writing abilities, um, all, all of the things, all of you, and, and making an honest assessment. And that's what we're here as a advisors, also to help you on that list and with that assessment, but also making a self-evaluation of you and your qualifications and your profile to make this best fit with the universities. And another thing that's really important that I know that um, admission counselors love is having this relationship with them. There's people on the other side of those emails. Um, and, uh, and I know for working with previous uh, grantees for undergraduates, they end up almost friends with the admissions counselors. And I say, well, I'm writing to the, and they know the names. I don't know their names. Uh, by heart right now, but there's a, I was talking to Logan and then Mary told me this and blah, blah, blah. I don't know them, but I'm glad that you're having this conversation with them and they become your friends. So they, they, their job is to help you get through all of these things. And, and along with the education as advisor, they're gonna be your best friends in uh, trying to get you to that university. Uh, and they're also going to be honest with you and say, there's, there's uh, we don't have the program that you're looking for. This might not be the best fit for you. Uh, based on your, what you're looking for and all those things. But it's good that you create these relationships that, that you um, talk to them. And that is going to be also going to help you to understand if that school is the best fit for you. Um, also with the relations that, that you can uh, build with um, your the, the admissions counselor. I don't know if, it, if there's anything about it that you want to say regarding that. No, I mean, that. yeah, that sums it up. Um... Yeah, definitely admissions counselors, we're definitely here for you. Um, we go through a lot of applications, sure, but we do um, make ourselves available to you. Um, and there's plenty of students that I talk to almost on a daily basis. Um, but yeah, it, it's, it is great. So make sure that you do ask questions, get to know your admissions counselors. We are the ones that are making the decisions. Um, and we are here, we're an open book. So I don't know one admissions counselor that will say, stop emailing me and go away. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, thank you. Thank you, Abby. <clears throat> All right, so um, the next thing is where you, I know that you already touched uh, on this on last session with Claudia and Yandi, but make sure that you go to College Board and uh, Peterson's.com Peterson's and then study in the States, um, this, well, this long link that we have here, um, that uh, to do your university list according to your priorities, right? Remember that according to the things that you are looking for, um, like Bobby said, there's more than 4,000 universities in the U.S. Don't just stick to the ones that you have heard in the news or in the movies or something, because there's a wide variety. Like I said, there's more than, I don't know, I want to say than 100, but I don't know. But there's a lot of universities where you're going to be and we're going to be able to flourish and to succeed as a, um, as a student and uh, as a professional. Uh, so don't close your options just to names that you have uh, heard right in the past. So please do that uh, and and um, and college board. Right. So I'm just gonna go real quick. I know that you've done this before. Um, sorry about that. Here, uh, like I said, here you're going to be looking at uh, SAT uh, college board that work. One of your best friends for now on and on your application process go to college search and that is where you're going to be starting to do your your college your college search now in the google classroom you are going to find this document that i want to show you here uh, this is we have come up with this and there's two different kinds of documents that we're going to be filling out when you're looking at institutions this one is the first one uh, 
And I just have one example here because I was doing a, an, an advising session before and we looked at this university. Uh, but for example, let's say that you're looking at institutions after so doing your search in and, and the uh, search engine, you found this institution, you went to the website, you liked it, and then you start putting together in one document those institutions that you're interested in. So go ahead and these are the things that we consider to do important on the first filter. You can add more things, you can change this, add more um, rows and columns and things, make it your own. Uh, but I, I do want is because sometimes when you say, oh yeah, yeah, that university and you just write the name, please be specific and, and copy and paste the web page, the admissions web page, where is this um, uh, institution? Uh, what are the admission requirements that you've able to see? What, are, what is the cost? Do they have uh, any uh, information about, for example, um, about um, the, the diversity, about the amount of financial aid that they can give? They, all of the things that you consider that are pros and all of the things that you consider to be um, negative things and also, <clears throat> what questions do you have about this university that maybe we can answer, but maybe we can put you in contact with someone from that university or things that you said, okay, I have these questions. I want to ask these to the institution. Now, maybe sometimes these questions are going to be about um, something in the university, but make sure that you also read their website thoroughly, that you know and then you have seen because they spend a lot of time building those websites so you can have all the information available. Uh, and once you ask a question and they don't have it there, they'll try to make sure that put it up there so, the, so no more students are leaving uh, their website with those questions. So please, um, sometimes you, 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 some people, students ask questions like, do you have scholarships and financial aid? And what they're going to be doing is that they're gonna be sending you a link and say, look at this, this is where you can find this. Um, but, and then if, when someone does that, sometimes I can start your relationship with the left foot and say, well, this student is not really doing his or her work researching our website, right? Or what is your TOEFL score uh, for, uh, for international students? And again, they're gonna direct you to their webpage where they have a full page where they are telling what are the requirements for international students trying to get, unless your question is really, really specific that you've looked and looked and looked and you don't find the answer there, um, uh, you can you can ask uh, ask the question. I mean, you can ask the question either way, but, uh, but because of the kind of student that you are uh, and you're trying to also show that you are a highly qualified student, uh, th that also means that you have also a good reader and that you do your research and that you're going in depth into the websites. And the, diff the challenge for this is going to be that I, the homework for you is that I want you to do and write and, or have 20 institutions in, with this, in this list. And you're gonna say, Juan, that's a lot of institutions that is going to take us a while. But like I said, we want to work uh, and start, and then we're going to be sizing down to the final institutions that you're gonna be applying. But I want you to have a broad perspective of all the institutions that are uh, available out there and that are going to have really good programs that you're interested in and that fit your profile. That's gonna be hard. Uh, and we're going to go through the calendar also real quick, but, uh, but that is your challenge. That's, that's the next thing. The next thing is that we're going to be looking at many, many hundreds, you're gonna get into hundreds of different websites to come up with a list of 20 institutions that are going to be of your interest and of your priorities. For you, one of those things is going to be that they are able to provide you with a really, really good amount of financial aid. Um, which brings me to another question that I, well, I'm gonna ask that later. But yeah, so this document is in the Google Classroom. Make sure that uh, you download it and start filling this out. Okay, let's go back to the PowerPoint. Now, regarding financial situation, how is this going to be uh, working? And I, and I do want to say that for international students, um, and regarding the Mexican government and regarding all the different things, uh, the two sources, the two sources of 
um, money are going to be personal funds and what the university can give you. At different levels, for example, if you're doing a graduate program, um, the Mexican government and also the, the, the US government through the Fulbright Scholarship, or there's foundations or there's other things that you can apply to that can help you providing more funding for your studies. If you're a master's degree or if you're a doctorate degree, but at the bachelor's level, there's no more options. There's just two, there's um, not that we know of. Hope, I hope that we find more uh, and that and, and, and then governments or something can create something. But at this point, the only two sources are gonna be personal funds and financial aid or scholarships that the university can help. Um, there's no U.S. Embassy funds for this. There is no Mexican Secretary of Educación fundings for this. So we're really putting all of our efforts on this. And, the, for the, and like I said, for the kind of students that you are uh, and the reason why you're here in the, in the Opportunity Funds program, then we really, really need to be looking at universities that might, uh, potentially could give you um, full scholarships. So understanding that, we're, we're going to be checking in. Maybe if, please, Bobby, feel free to interrupt me anytime when, when I talk about financial aid. I'm not an expert in financial aid, uh, but I do have some, some understanding of this. So there's different kinds of financial aid that you can uh, get from institutions. Need-based, um, but like it, say, like it says, it's, it's a financial aid that you get because you need it, because you are considered a low-income student <clears throat> that needs um, this money. Most of the time, <clears throat> in many institutions, international students are not going to be um, eligible for need-based scholarships. And some universities, you will. And this is the tricky part. Let, let me get this out uh, at the beginning. There's no standardized way of doing financial aid for all institutions. Every institution gets to do their own thing, right? So, and they decide how to do it. And not even from the same state, not even from the same city, they all do this things differently. Sometimes you apply when to the to to the to financial aid when you're doing your application. Sometimes you need to do it in a different form. Sometimes you need to do it after you're admitted. Sometimes you need to do it before you're admitted. So it's it's an interesting ride when when you have the, the those different institutions having their own thing. So like I said, we can talk about this generally, but please find out this information specifically for the institutions that you're looking at. But like I said, need-based then it's, in, it's that it's money that you uh, need because you're proven that um, you you are in need of that money because you're a low-income student. Then we have merit-based and talent-based. These are going to be based like um, I, I think what Bobby was saying with the the, the um, uh, scholarships that are available <clears throat> based on your GPA, based on your SAT scores, your ACT scores, um, or um, and any other things that specific things that you do, sports, for example, maybe there's an instrument that you play, uh, there's on a, a specific talent or grace that you have um, you have received, um, and, and that that make you a really really high qualified student. And many times, and I don't know, maybe uh, Robert, you can tell us about how this works for for your university, but uh, many times there's also a direct description of your grade and how much money you get, right? Sometimes there's like a, if you have a 3.0, you get $5,000. And if you have a 3.2, you get this amount of money. Or or if you get uh, uh, 1,400 in the SAT, this is what you get. Uh, is there some sort of like correlation with, with the scholarships? Yeah, so that's usually how it goes. Um, they usually have a matrix of, you know, where your GPA is at here and then where say your SAT score is at. Um, you know, depending on if, you know, where it is. So if you have like a 3.0 GPA and a 1200 SAT, yeah, maybe you'll get $5,000. But if you have a 3.0 GPA and say a 1600 SAT, maybe you're eligible for nine, ten thousand $10,000. So, yep. Uh, good, thank you. Um, so yeah, so that's why you want to get as high as a GPA as you can get in this last year or study really hard for those, uh, for that SAT uh, so you can get more. And th those are kind of like the, the metrics that the university says, okay, this student is qualified and is going to be successful. Uh, we can, we can um, 
invest our money in this student because we have seen evidence that this student is going to do well in the academic uh, environment. So you want to provide as much as evidence, uh, as much evidence as you can get uh, for, for that. Now, financial aid and scholarships, sometimes we, many times we use those words interchangeably. Uh, sometimes they are, uh, many times they're not. Uh, so financial aid, it could be um, also understood as money that you get because you need it. Uh, it's, it's money that um, is uh, assigned to you based on your, uh, the information that you provided in the, um, in the application process. And many times scholarships are going to be based on your merit, but also sometimes scholarships, you can apply to scholarships sometimes after uh, you provided um, uh, your, your admissions um, package, right? So for example, you've, there's already been a decision on your admission and you were giving, um, I don't know, $15,000 on your for financial aid. Uh, and then you ask, is there any additional scholarships that you can apply to? And maybe they have the presidential scholarship. Maybe there's um, money that a certain family donated for students from specific part of the world, and you can apply to that, right? You need to do an extra essay, and then you need to um, have an interview with a committee and something like that. But there's, so there's extra money, and maybe with those, with the financial aid and the extra scholarships, then maybe sometimes you can get a full package that is more generous uh, for for your uh, for your admission for, for for your program, right? I don't know if there's anything that I, I might be um, going over on that. Uh, Bobby, is there anything you want to share about financial aid and scholarships? Oh, that's right. Oh, okay. Well, thank you. Yeah. Um, and also, there's there's and just to, to final. Um, that things about um, um, financial aid. There's there's admissions that have to do with need aware and need blind. <clears throat> and if you don't get this at the first time, don't worry. I didn't get it on the first time that I someone explained it to me. Uh, we can talk about this later also again. But this is the idea how your your um, um, your potential of paying for school affects whether or not you get accepted into a school. Uh, so you, there are certain universities, for example, need blind universities are going to be universities that they do not consider the money that you have to pay to say if they accept you or not in the institution. Uh, so they will accept you and these institutions many times they don't ask you for financial um, information before their admission. Uh, uh, so their, their decision of being accepted or not is not based on how much money does can your family provide for your education. And then need aware are going to be institutions that for that, for, so they can accept you, they need to see if they are going to be able to meet your need before they accept you into their institution. So it doesn't mean that you're not a qualified student, but they need to look at their financial before they offer you an acceptance. I know some universities guaranteed that they are going to meet 100% of your need before if they accept you. So those universities are going to be universities that they need to see if um, their financial situation and how much money you can provide and if they're really interested in you and you are a really, really high need uh, student, they're going to see if they have the money for you. Uh, and if not, they're not going to accept you. So those feel a little bit different because they are rejecting you, even though you might be a great student, but it has to do with their financial uh, situation. But yeah, so you do want to ask if there, what are the policies? How do they how do they do admissions? Are they need blind, need aware? Sometimes it will be uh, need blind for um, for domestic students, for American students, but they're going to be need aware for international students. So that's something that you also want to take into consideration when considering uh, schools to apply. And okay, I just want to end up the session with um, reminding you about our calendar <clears throat> uh, and when should be uh, should you be looking at um, to, to do this? So, so right now we have done this. This is where you are going to find the Word document um, that I was 
chain right now, and we're in the stage two of our program. Um, and we do want to work on the month of June looking for this 20 institutions, right? With this 20 institutions. Um, for the next session, may, our next session we're gonna have on, on June um, 11th. Remember that Friday check-ins that we're gonna be having. Um, uh, please have at least 10 institutions by that date. Uh, um, but please work as hard as you can working for finding those institutions. Um, and, uh, and since we do want to be working, let me see, I, do, I hear this, sorry. Mm -hmm. Calendars. This is also another resource that you should be looking at um, pretty often. So here, right? So general data, school research in the Word document. Um, this is next week. I do, I do want to give you probably the second and the third week of June so you can work on that Word document. But for the first week of July, we're going to be working on another document more detail with the reduction of this institution. So, um, so please, I guess we have um, June, the third week of June, uh, second and third week of June to work on, on, on that. So please by the 11th have at least 10 institutions and so we're going to review those in our session for the 11th for the check-in session for or just for undergraduate students. Uh, but please for the during the month of June be actively looking for those 20 institutions and so we can start um, uh, looking at those and start reducing those uh, by, by the end of the month. Uh, well, I'm going to stop here and I'm going to open it for questions. You can open your mic if you have questions or you can put them on the chat box. I have one question. Yes, Tammy, please. Okay, so does early action or early decision affect the financial aid that's granted? Hmm. Interesting question. Um, I hate this answer, but it does depend. Uh, it, it depends. Um, I, I, if, if anyone wants to jump in also with my with uh, uh, with this, but sometimes it is sometimes traditionally no uh, or thought of uh, students doing early decision as more students that really really know where they want to go, um, and that might also sometimes in certain universities affect the money that they give to certain specific uh, groups of students doesn't mean that they're not going to have money for the other um, for the other um, rounds of application uh, but it depends on the school it really depends on the school I don't know if Bobby or Claudia also that you're here has anything to add to that question that question I mean I think that's uh, I'm here I'm here answer, I'm yeah. just struggling with my computer I'm so sorry let me just try to connect again my my microphone and my earplugs here. There you go. Hold on, hold on, hold on. I'm here. Okay, so sorry, Bobby. You were saying. That's okay. I was just saying, yeah, that's a very diplomatic answer. I mean, most of the <laughs> questions um, that are asked of any institution are going to be. It depends. Yeah, um, can you hear me now? Different. This is not working. I'm sorry. We can hear you. Hold on, Claudia. Hold on, Claudia. I think uh, um, Bobby was giving you answer. Can you hear us? Yeah, I can barely hear you, but it's fine. Can you can you come up again with a question, please? Okay, hold on, hold on. Bobby's gonna finish his answer, and then we we're gonna have you say the answer. Okay. Um, yeah. So you know, it just it does all depend. Um, 
on you know what they have. Uh, many institutions, you know, if you're doing their early decision or early action, um, you know, some of them could be contract binding. So uh, maybe they have you know set amount of financial aid or scholarships that they're going to be providing at that point in time, um, and then anybody after that, um, it just kind of depends on what they have left over. Um, so it just again, yeah, it, each one is different. So again, make sure that you um, make friends with the admissions counselors. And you can ask those questions and I'll definitely give you the answer. Right. Right. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah, Bobby. And Claudia, the, the question that Tammy has is regarding if early action or early admission has any impact on the financial aid that they can get. No, if the institution accepts you or make you makes you an offer in early uh, decision, for example, they will provide the all, all the funding that you need that you that you and your family uh, prove that you need it. So, mm -hmm. so well, yeah. And, and as soon as you applied an early action or an early decision, of course, you will have a little more chance to get more financial aid. That's for sure. But you need to be very careful if you apply to to early decision because uh, it should be only, as I mentioned on, on, a, on a presentation a few weeks ago, if, if the school accepts you, you need to, to drop off all the, all the other uh, applications for, for the other institutions. Mm -hmm. And some, um, some other institutions also if, uh, give you the chance to apply on early decision, but they also have early uh, restrictive, no, this res restrictive early decision. Yeah, the restrictive early decision, which means that uh, you can apply an early decision as well, but only to that institution or two, not to all of them. So yes, you uh, you can ask to your advisor, to the opportunity advisor, which would be the best option for you if you are very convinced if you want to apply to early decision or early action to your to the institutions. Right. Thank you, Claudia. And I think that we can get I'm we can do uh, we can do a whole hour of on on early That's decision, right. early action, mm -hmm. and all those and need yeah. line and, and need aware and those. But thank you. Elise was asking if we meet both the criteria for financial aid and merit based scholarships, could we get both? Um, for most institutions, you can get, uh, you can do uh, all of the uh, scholarships that they can tell you that you can apply for. You can stack them. And I really, I really like that word in English because I don't think um, the best description for that in Spanish that I've heard is like amontonamiento de becas. <laughs> and I really like that word because it's like just the idea of like putting things on top of other things. Uh, but yeah, you can do those. Uh, you can do those sometimes because sometimes the sources of the money is, is from the university, but from different sources. Uh, maybe there was a special grant or maybe there was a specific donation that someone gave um, and they, they, so that you can, yeah, you can put those uh, together. Some institutions are going to have restrictions on, on those scholarships. Again, we don't want to generalize. Some of them will say, oh, you either apply for this or you either apply for that because at the end, they need to decide, like the video that I shared with you earlier, that they need to decide if they give big amounts of money to a couple of students or if they get smaller amounts of money to more students, right? So, or maybe they do both or that these are decisions that they need to make and that uh, they have implications for students and, 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 and they need to take those decisions. So yeah, so it depends on the institution, what is their plan? Um, uh, to do with with that money, right? Uh, but like I said, for example, we could we could do. I mean, opportunity funds, for example, could be a scholarship that only helps one student, but we can give that one student more, or it's a as a program that serves twenty five students uh, with a little bit less, right? So that's the idea of also how allocating the funds for different programs works, right? There's always just limited amount of, of money. Thank you, Kyle, for that. Thank you. Yeah, you can copy and paste that information because that's really useful uh, and, and put it somewhere uh, for, 
with Cloud just within the in the chat box. Any other questions? Thank you, thank you, Tammy, and thank you, Lisa, for those questions. <clears throat> Marlene, Sarah, Johan, no questions? I think I'm gonna make it mandatory to you ask question. At least ask the presenter what's his favorite um, flavor of, uh, of ice cream or something. Color or something. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the, the questions must be mandatory. I had questions, but we're already answered. Well. Yes, Tammy. Are there are there scholarships that cover different things aside from tuition and housing, for example? I don't know. Maybe I, this is because I watch a lot of YouTube videos, and sometimes I hear that students get scholarship for clothes, where in places where the climate is really cold, or sometimes they get even a computer or something like that. So, do those scholarships exist? Mm -hmm. uh, well, it's, it's, it's about the specific university again, uh, with those, they, I'm, 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 I'm glad. So, so for example, I've known some universities that they have a, uh, a, they do like a code, like you were saying, like a code drive, for example, and then students who have extra codes will put it in a specific place and like international students or anyone who wants to come and get a code, they can come and get it, right? Uh, or they would do like a food pantry for the university and then students who don't have anything to eat that week, then they can go and get a couple of things. And then when they have something extra, they go and put it back in the pantry. So things like that um, happening, it depends on the need and the organization of the university. Uh, I've seen many things like that happening. So for example, there was one institution that I really loved the idea that they had. It was that they have a special room where they have suits that they lend to students that are going to be going to interviews, job interviews, and they don't have the, the clothing to get ready for those interviews. So a lot of people have donated their, their suits and they have them there in a, in a room and then so students can come and borrow a suit just for an interview and then give it back. Uh, so there's many things like that that, that the community um, provides uh, to students. Um, now, you might not be able to put that into I-20 when you get accepted uh, for, for that, but know that there's going to be a lot of support also. For, and then uh, use institutions I know for being, for being like that, right? Very generous and very community oriented. <clears throat> but yeah, so they, they do exist. Not maybe sometimes in the form of scholarships, um, but yeah. Good question. And I'm glad that you, and I'm glad that you're looking at YouTube videos and things like that. Please, for the rest of you, be looking out at just. I'm going to be sharing some some uh, bloggers and some people that are doing things out there that I consider to be uh, well informed. Also, uh, but please, please do your own research and be reading and be looking at videos and different things uh, for that. Anyways, I think we're going to be uh, closing. If there's no other question, no more questions. Nobody else. Well, oh, I. Yes. Maybe how many um, selective schools should we choose, and how many safe options in, especially in the twenty university list? <clears throat> Good question. So your final list, your final list is going to be um, depending on your profile. I want to say two two one or two one two, depending. But the idea is that I want you to have one or two reach, preferably one, two target and two safety, or maybe depending, if you make a really good case for any of those universities, I can, I, we can try to see if there's two reach or two target and one safety or something like that. But there does have to be universities and all the different sections, right? And all of those, but, um, where you're not gonna have more than two reach universities in your list. Uh, and it's, it needs to be a well-balanced uh, list of institutions. All of them should be able to offer you a full package of financial aid. Um, we're not gonna be putting institutions that 
we don't know or we're not for sure that at least there's the possibility, right? <clears throat> not that they're offering it to you, but they you can fight for those, right? That we've known that they are they're known for providing uh, uh, good packages of financial aid for for international students. But yeah, that's kind of the idea. Good question. <clears throat> All right. Well, thank you so much for for your time, everyone. Bobby, thank you so much for uh, being here in the session with with us and for everyone. Um, Ana and, and uh, Jorge, um, Fernanda, thank you so much for, for all the work that you do with, with, with our uh, opportunities. And everyone, thank you. Opportunity gets, did we take a picture of everyone? Did we already did? No. I'll, I'll take another one. one more. Yeah, thank you. A ver. Uh, Eliseo, can you turn on your camera? Imabe. Okay. Una, dos. Listo. Well, thank you, everyone. Have a great rest of your afternoon or evening, and I will see you soon. All right. Goodbye. Bye. Thank Bye, you, everyone. Bobby. Bye. 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 Thank you.